Welcome to module 24 of database management systems course in IIT Madras online BSc program. We have been discussing about uh, the design of relational databases and uh, we introduced the notion of functional dependencies which is key in uh, building a mathematical framework for this design theory. We have uh, talked about some basic uh, information uh, definitions on functional dependencies and some notions of attribute closure and stuff like that. <coughs> In this module, we are going to learn different important algorithms that can compute properties of functional dependencies. So, the first is uh, the closure of attribute sets which we have already studied. We have seen this example uh, before where we can take any subset of attributes and by repeatedly applying the functional dependencies uh, onto it till no change can happen, we can compute the closure set of the set of attributes, any set of attributes. So, there we have also discussed that there are several uses for this uh, closer attribute closure set computation and today actually we will see uh, going forward we will see more and more of these use. First is obviously testing for super key because uh, it uh, a set of attributes can be a super key if its closure is the entire set of attributes. We can also check for candidate key by taking subsets of a super key and checking if that too is a super key or not. We can check for functional dependencies that is uh, to check whether alpha determines beta all that we need to do is to compute the attribute closure for the set alpha which is alpha plus and check whether beta is an subset of that. If it is then the functional dependency holds, if it is not then it does not hold. And also in terms of computing the closure of uh, the uh, functional dependencies f, you remember we have introduced the closure of functional dependencies that is a set of functional dependencies f we can compute f plus uh, as the closure set which is all possible functional dependencies that may be logically implied from the set f and we can also for taking different subsets of the relation set we can find the respective closure and in that process using that we can check for different functional dependencies in the closure set and compute the closure set. So, this is one uh, use. Now, we will go into defining other notions and checking how to compute them. The first that we uh, um, introduce is called the extraneous attribute. A functional dependency may be such that uh, it has extra attributes and attributes uh, which may not actually be required. So, it is kind of a sense to minimize a functional dependency and this extraneous uh, functional dependency, extraneous attribute in a functional dependency could be either on the left hand side or it could be on the right hand side. So, we will illustrate through examples, but uh, just to look at the definition, suppose we have a functional dependency alpha determines beta in f where alpha is a subset of the set of attributes beta naturally is another subset of the set of attributes. Then you say a particular attribute a is extraneous in this functional dependency if obviously if it belongs to the left hand side that is the first case that is a is an element of alpha and if I remove it if I remove it still then the set of functional dependencies will not change. So, what is the uh, factor of removing it? First is I remove the functional dependency from the set f, f minus 
alpha determines beta. Form a new functional dependency where a is not there on the left hand side. So, that is alpha minus a determines beta. We are checking if this is possible to be done and add it to the set. And now, if this set and the set f are equivalent or if f logically implies this set, then we can say that a is extraneous and can be removed. In similar terms, uh, we can find an attribute a in the right hand side beta, obviously a has to belong to beta and check what is the effect of removing a in beta. So, I remove the original uh, functional dependencies and we add a new functional dependency where alpha determines beta minus a, beta difference a and see whether that can logically imply f. Right? So, you can you can see the, the two, two, two sides okay. uh, <coughs> because uh, what you are uh, doing is uh, in the first case in the left when it is in the left hand side you are removing some attribute from the left hand side. So, you are actually making the functional dependency stronger because you need less number of attributes to match to declare that the right hand side beta matches. Right? So, you are making it stronger. What you are doing in the extraneous on the second case on the right hand side, you are actually removing an attribute from beta which means that it is actually getting weakened. We have, uh, this is a weaker dependency because earlier you are saying that alpha can functionally determine all attributes of beta. Now, you are saying that is not needed if it just uh, uh, does beta minus a will that also be equivalent. So, you have a weaker functional dependency. So, you can try to uh, see that uh, in some cases it will be possible to remove, in some cases it will not be possible to remove. So, let us uh, look at this, let us take a set of functional dependencies uh, a determines c, a b determines c. Now, we are checking for left hand side, let us say is b, b extraneous in a b determines c. The question is if I take this set of functional dependencies f, then this implies a determines c that is if I drop b, I am checking whether a determines c is implied. Right? Now, that is already there. Right? So, <coughs> what you can check by doing a, uh, a c. Right? So, basically what we conclude is we can remove the dependent the attribute b from the left hand side. This might look like a pathological example, but that is what often comes up. Now, let us say if we choose something on the right hand side a determines c and a b determines c c d. Now, we want to say that c is extraneous in this a b determines c d because a b determines c can be inferred even after deleting c from the right hand side. Right? Why? Because a determines c. So, if a determines c, then obviously a b determines c because you are making the functional dependency weaker. Right? So, it can be inferred. Since it can be inferred, I can get a b determines c and I can I will have a b determines d. So, by union rule I will have a b determines c d. So, you can also do this by doing the attribute closure which is the formal way you will do it and you will see that uh, this is okay, this is what is possible and I can remove c from the right hand side. So, this is uh, um, uh, so you can see that it is <coughs> possible to at some cases possible to remove some extraneous attributes on the left hand side or the right hand side. And the tests are simple. So, to, to test if uh, A is extraneous in alpha that is on the left hand side, all that you need to do is to take out A from alpha and compute the closure using all functional dependencies in F. right? Because you have taken out and then 
this is this is what uh, you will have and uh, you will check whether this closure of attributes contains beta if it does a is extraneous very straightforward for the other it will have to be done little differently because uh, you are now making having a weaker set so a weaker set whether it will imply the stronger set so you make the new set and call it f prime let us say. So, with respect to f primed now you compute the closure of alpha alpha plus earlier you were in the first case you were computing with respect to f because you had you had made it uh, you had made it stronger. Now, you are computing it with respect to f primed which is a new set and if that contains that f alpha plus contains say a then you will say that a is extraneous in beta and can be removed. So, the tests are very simple using the uh, closure of the attributes algorithm. Naturally the um, uh, other notion which you have already understood is uh, that uh, how do we set if two sets of functional dependencies are equivalent. You can say one is stronger than the other and the other is stronger than this one right. So, that is a that is a simple way. So, two I am sorry there are two sets f and g we will say they are equivalent if their closure is same that if I take the closure of uh, f and if I take the closure of g then if they are identical then obviously these are equivalent because when I have a set f of functional dependencies what actually works is a set f plus similarly for g. So, it there could be two sides to it uh, you have to prove by the cover that uh, one is f plus um, uh, implies g that is if you compute f plus g will be a subset of that and at the same time. So, that says f covers g and the other side is g plus implies f which means g plus will contain f that is g covers f and if both of them are true then you say that they are equivalent. So, these are the possibilities if f covers g is true and this is true g covers f is true then it is then these sets are equivalent if f covers g is true, but g covers f is false then g is weaker g the. So, f is a super set of g though actually this is not a set operation because the sets are different, but in the notion the the strength that f has g does not have that much strength. So, actually the subset uh, relationship will be able to see if we actually compute the closure and we will see that uh, f plus is a super set of g plus and the other side where g covers uh, f and uh, if both of them are false that is none covers the other then naturally there is no comparison there are they are independent sets of functional dependencies. Now, we come to the notion of canonical cover. So, you can see that uh, a set of functional dependencies is not something which is unique. I can remove some attributes on the left hand side that changes I can remove some attributes from the right hand side. When I remove some attributes or even otherwise it may be possible that there is some functional dependency which is not actually required to be there, but can be implied from others. So, if we if you think in that uh, you know in, in the in the intuitive sense then what we are saying is the closure set is the maximal one you know this is given this f this is the whole world of functional dependencies it means. Now, we want to go to the other extreme and that is more required for efficiency of algorithms that what is the minimal set what are the functional dependencies that I must have. So, that I retain the original set of constraints right. So, to define, so that is what we uh, define as canonical cover. You may have uh, come across this term uh, in, say, switching theory. If you have done, you know, canonical is is the standard cover. So 
there are three basic requirements. One is uh, that obviously, this is obvious. So, f is the given set and f c is the canonical minimal set, which is expected to be smaller different from f. Now, naturally they have to be equivalent. If they are not equivalent, it does not work as a, as a cover. So, that is uh, that goes without saying, which means f must logically imply uh, all dependencies in f c, f c must logically imply all dependencies in f we have just seen. No functional dependency should have an extraneous attribute. There should be no extra fat in the body. There should be every functional dependency should be as slim as possible both on the left hand side as well as on the right hand side. And each left hand side of a functional dependency is unique. That is there would not be two different functional dependencies say alpha determining beta and alpha determining gamma in the set. You know if it exists we can always use the union rule and write it like this. So, we will have this. So, it is possible that if actually I have multiple functional dependencies with identical left hand side, I will use the union rule, make them together into one set and have less number of functional dependencies. <coughs> so, intuitively canonical cover is a minimal set of functional dependencies. It is equivalent to f it does not have any redundant functional dependency, it does not have any redundant part in a functional dependency in terms of extraneous uh, attributes. Now, this it is also called uh, besides canonical cover, it is also called uh, minimal set, it is also called irreducible set because it cannot be made smaller. And uh, please note that again we are using the term minimal, we are not saying minimum because it is possible that you will have more than one canonical cover for a set of functional dependencies. Example, so let us say I am uh, given with this set of functional dependencies A determines B, B determines C, A determines C. Now, naturally the functional dependency A determines C is redundant here. Why is it redundant? Because it can be inferred from the a determines B and B determines C. Okay. So, if I if I remove this, it still remains the same, it still gives the same closure for the functional dependencies and therefore, it is a minimal set. Now, for removing parts, let us say we consider this set A determines B, B determines C, A determines C D. Now, this can obviously, you can see that uh, this can be removed, this C can be removed because A determines B, B determines C means that A determines C. So, if A determines C, it obviously A determines um, C and A determines D after removal. If I have them, then I can always have, I will always have A determines C D. Right? So, this is now, naturally you will have to show it uh, both ways that uh, this actually works on, on both ways and conclude that D can be C can be removed from the right hand side. To remove on the left hand side, uh, let us consider this after this uh, reduction has been done, then on I am sorry uh, on, a, on a different example A determines B, B determines C and A C determines D. Now, you can easily observe that C can be removed from here. Why? Because A determines B, B determines C transitively says A determines C. Okay? So, if A determines C, then having C on the left hand side is not required because if tuples match on A, they will obviously match on C. Right? So, the C is redundant, you can also use Armstrong axiom to deduce. So, this the canonical cover turns out to be a determines B, B determines C and A determines D. You can again prove it in both ways. Right? So, this is how the canonical uh, cover works and uh, it uh, strongly helps in solving several problems. Here I have shown the other way of uh, doing the same solution instead of 
uh, using Armstrong's axioms and doing a kind of ad hoc uh, observation based logic. This is the structured algorithm where you do the same thing using the closure of attributes and you can show that the minimality of the canonical cover reduction in these cases. Please try and practice it at home and so this is for the other example. So, I am not going through the steps of this. Now, let us look at if if this is the process, how do we structure it in terms of an algorithm? Because certainly we would like to automate each and every part of the design process so that complex designs can be easily handled. Right? So, this is the this is the iteration that we would be doing. Okay. Now, the first thing we say is uh, at every stage we try to see if there are two or more functional dependencies with the identical left hand side. Right. So, we will use union rule if alpha 1 determines beta 1 and alpha 1 determines beta 2, we will replace it by alpha 1 determines beta 1 beta 2 right at every stage because there may be new cases that are that the new functional dependencies that arise that has the same left hand side as a functional dependency already existing in the set right that is why it is to be done repeatedly so this will ensure that at this point the set of functional dependencies have unique left hand side now, you find a functional dependency alpha determines beta, which has a extraneous attribute either in alpha or in beta. Right? Now, you will certainly have to do this using not the original f, because you are changing it. So, you have to do it with the current f c canonical cover that you have. And you have already seen the algorithm to determine extraneous attribute, take every functional dependency and consider left hand side, check if there is an attribute which is extraneous, check the right hand side if there is any attribute which is extraneous, if it is there you remove that and you get it. So, if you find an extraneous attribute then you delete it from alpha determines beta. Now, through these two steps the set may have changed the from whatever you started the iteration at this point coming to this point it has changed. If it has changed then you go back and do this again. Again check for identical left hand side check for do that change get a new f c with respect to that check again if there are extraneous attributes on left and right. If it is there remove and in this process if change has happened then you keep repeating. Now, obviously, this uh, repetition is uh, uh, possible uh, is this uh, repetition is terminable because whenever you give an algorithm you have to ensure that it terminates. This uh, algorithm is terminable for the simple reason that in every stage you are either reducing one depend one functional dependency or you are reducing one attribute at least if you have not reduced any functional dependency and if you have not reduced any attribute then obviously you will have an identical set so in each iteration uh, the you will be reducing at least one from each and therefore the whole set keeps on shrinking and since it is a finite uh, set it will at some point stop changing. So, that you have got the minimal cover the canonical cover note the order in which you do these uh, operations might impact the actual result that you produce. Right? So, it is possible that uh, on different order of application you may have different canonical cover results. 
So, this is an example which uh, I would encourage you to uh, work through. This is uh, worked according to the algorithm. So, this is the set we start with. So, what all we can we can combine these two because have identical left hand side. So, if we do that then we have A determines B C and A determines B. So, that gets combined and we have a smaller set. Now, A is uh, extraneous in A B determines C. You will come, come through the algorithmic uh, check, but here by observation we can very easily say because B determines C. So, A B will obviously determine C. So, if you remove this, then you have B determines C which is already present. So, it actually once you remove this the entire functional dependency gets removed and this is your reduced set. Okay. Now, what do you have? You have A determines B C and B determines C. Right? Now, in A determines B C, uh, we claim that C is extraneous, because if I remove that I have A determines B, I already have B determines C. So, these two together will give me A determines C by transitivity and then these two together gives me A determines B C. Right? The closure will closure of attributes will make it easy to use this, but this is the basic process. So, this can uh, from this C can also be removed. So, what I am left with is this. Right? It is interesting to see right you had quite a lot and now we are just left with two functional dependencies each having only one element on left on right two unique ones. So, this is the minimal cover. Right? So, that uh, brings us uh, to I mean what I have uh, given after this is a set of problems for you to practice based on the algorithms that we have done. The first set of uh, problems is to find a given functional whether a given functional dependency is implied from a set of functional dependencies. So, you know what needs to be done, you have to do a closure of the left hand side set of attributes and see whether the right hand side attribute is uh, set is included in that. So, there are a couple of uh, these, please practice so that you will start really understanding the algorithm. The second uh, set of problems relate to finding super key. So, you have to given a set of functional dependencies, you have to find uh, the sets which are super key which means the sets of attributes for which the closure is the entire set of attributes. The third set of problems are uh, similar to the second set here you have to find the candidate keys that is super key which is minimal right. So, candidate key. So, you have to show that it is a, this is a super key and no subset of it is a super key. The fourth set is about prime and non prime attributes. Okay. The prime attribute is a, a s attribute uh, set that belongs to any candidate key. If some attribute belongs to some candidate key, then it is called a prime attribute. So, if you have you know C k 1, C k 2, C k 3 you know different candidate keys, then you take the union of all of them that set is the prime set of prime attributes. And non prime attributes are those which does not belong to any candidate key. These are called non prime attributes. These notions are critical because we are going to use them subsequently. And in this problem set, you have to find the prime and non prime attributes of the following different functional dependency sets to get a good hold on the notion. Then, checking equivalence, we have uh, already uh, discussed how to check the equivalence and you will try to use the attribute closure algorithm to check the equivalence. That is you have to show that for for f uh, covering g you will have to show that f can uh, I mean say in a functional dependency in g say a determines c d can be logically implied from f and so on. If you try to just do the whole cover and compute it, it goes out of hand. And uh, then some problems for finding the 
minimal cover as we have just done. So, there is a list of uh, problems uh, they, are, they are there and uh, you have to uh, solve them at home and get comfortable. So, this brings us to the end of uh, this module. Thank you for your attention and we will continue this in the next module.